Hello, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at Cosmoverse 2025, and I'm lucky enough to have found Peter from Bosch. Everybody knows Bosch, a household name here at a crypto conference, and we're going to find out why. So, Peter, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Absolutely amazed here about the conference and stuff. It's very nice. How are you finding Split? Beautiful country, Croatia. You guys know we spend a lot of time here. How are you finding it? Uh, really good. Big, uh, I hadn't had too much time yeah, to see the city, but I just drove through and uh, I love it here. It's nice, nice weather compared to what we have in Germany. Yep, or the UK. We're not going to talk about that and depress everybody. So really, Peter, one thing that I'm very excited to find out is everybody knows Bosch, a household name. How come you're at a crypto conference? You know, what's your interest here with cryptocurrencies? Yeah, that has to do really with my role at Bosch. I work for innovation and automotive strategy. So that means we have to look into future technologies. Yep. We have to look into future ways of how to let cars connect to the infrastructure, okay. connect everything what we are building. Since as at Bosch, you just named it as a household brand. Uh, we are building everything which is connected, which you can find in the house, which you can find in the industry. Uh, power tools, everybody knows the, the drill machines, and all that, yeah. uh, the, the washing machines and all that in the kitchen. However, the biggest part still is mobility. And so we think about uh, cars which drive in the future, autonomously maybe, uh, which have a huge future in terms of e-mobility. Yep. And what you need here is decentralization. And uh, this is exactly, um, I started the whole search and research already in 2016. Well, wow. when we started a huge global project at Bosch called Economy of Things. Okay. And already then we evaluated what is out there, what is blockchain, what are these decentralized networks and all that. And since then we are trying to understand what are the best protocols, but you all know how the, I would say the industrial, um, I would say skeptic are still there. And uh, so um, we are still working on it. And decentralization is the key word here. When it comes to energy, when it comes to decentralized payment, maybe in the future in the cars, when it comes to decentralized infrastructure networks where cars need to drive through and use stuff, not always the centralistic approaches, but always have Gap up Google, Amazon and stuff in your car. We are looking for decentralized alternatives. Fantastic. And really what we're talking about here is the Internet of Things, right? Exactly. Where everything connects. This is this kind of sci-fi-esque world that we're moving towards. I think sci-fi-esque, is that the right terminology there? Uh, still for us, it's more esoteric. Yes. So because uh, when we talk about that, and I have to say it just quite clearly from the beginning, I think uh, what's happening at the moment in the world politics yep. is helping us a lot because we need to come uh, out of these centralistic bubbles, which yep. we are all in, look at uh, social networks, look at all the other things. And again, it's true than never that we need more data sovereignty, especially now in Europe. And this exactly helps us to push that even further. And that keeps me really alive as well with these topics. Fantastic. Keeps you busy, I'm sure. And it, it, it's very interesting. Um, when we look at cryptocurrencies, there's a kind of esotericism to crypto, yeah. right? The, the word crypto. But actually, they can play a fundamental role in enabling worlds like the Internet of Things. You, know, you talk about self-driving cars, you talk about machines interacting with one another. They need a system to do that. And crypto, beyond perhaps financial applications, fits that role beautifully. But also, if you think about how these machines are going to perhaps pay one another, mm -hmm. exactly, that can only be done. You couldn't do that on traditional payment Rails, could you maybe talk a little bit about specific, perhaps, use cases that you guys are looking at implementing a distributed ledger technology for? Exactly, the, the uh, cars ping each other. Uh, so that was one of the main things when we talked about economy of things, our initial project. And so you need some kind of, there, there already we research smart contracts and yep. stuff. And, all this, uh, and we do not really believe in just doing it all centrally. Because then you always have this man in the middle, this controlling centralistic uh, part. And we did some very interesting research on um, game theory, yes. where we find out if there is one central party controlling it all, monopolistic uh, uh, companies and all that, there's only one winner at the end, yes. yeah, the platform owner. And so this is not something that we would like to have in the future. And when, we, when it comes to cars who have to pay stuff or maybe Think about electric uh, mobility or electronic things that have to talk to each other and, and share data. We do not want to have a controlling instance behind it. 
Yeah, so this is exactly where we look in decentralized control for all, not for only one. However, governance-wise and so on, it's, it's quite interesting and challenging. And so consensus mechanisms in the DLT way helps a lot here, I guess. Yeah, I think it's, you know, we talk about the introduction of this technology, it can create a kind of level playing field. We saw with Amazon Web Services a few days ago, the outage and how many businesses that impacted. Exactly. This can be avoided with distributed ledger technology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, where are you guys? You, you say you've been working on this since 2016. That's a long time. I mean, that's a real foresight right. into this industry and just what it can do. Where is Bosch in regards to actually rolling this out into their products? Are, you, are, are we exactly. still piloting? Are we looking to go forward? I mean, you know, where are we with all of this? This is really a long time, as you said. Yeah, very much, especially in crypto. Dog years in crypto, isn't it? <laughs> but again, we're talking about a conservative European uh, traditional sure. industry that mm -hmm. needs a long time. And uh, it makes sense because we talk about quality, we talk about safety on the roads um, mm -hmm. and lives. Of course. And uh, then we had um, lots of times where we really had to have a uh, yeah, challenging crisis around yep. us and not getting less uh, these days. However, what, does, what helped us um, a lot was now the EU is now pushing into yes. data surrendering, is pushing as well with a digital identity. Mm -hmm. This is another very important part. And this digital identity needs to be decentralized as well. Of course. And so this helped us. and. We will see now, we had a lot, uh, the last years we had always uh, POCs, test installations, test implementation with one or the other customer, uh, but never really came to scalability, never came to really, a really impact on the market. But now it's changing, I think, again, with the world politics behind us and uh, really seeing now that we need our own data sovereignty. Now, more and more customers, so the big car manufacturers yes. coming to us, and then they need to demand a new, I would say, data sovereign software, data sovereign service, data sovereign product in the future, uh, where we don't always have to rely on Google Pay, Apple Pay, or the IDs from that sort. And then uh, we, we are developing, based on the digital decentralized identity at the moment, real products and services in that demand. Fantastic. That's music to our ears. And I think. When you look at uh, big household names like, like, like Bosch, everybody knows it, certainly in the UK. I mean, I remember my granddad using Bosch work tools, you know, in the garden. And it, 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 fr from everything, Bosch Absolutely. has really got you covered. Um, do you see this as something, this technology as something companies, institutions, corporations are going to need to adopt to stay relevant? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because um, what we see is really decentralization taking part in all yes. industries. And if you do not want to get lost here, and if you want to, to be relevant still in the future, and I still as well talk about such a huge company like Bosch, we as well are struggling and fighting against Bosch. technologies and challenges. There you have to go in more, maybe a more open, more, I would say, cooperative way of yes. working. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that is one of the major things we found out. Nobody can do it alone anymore when it comes to decentralized, uh, not decentralized, uh, data sovereign yep. products and stuff. You always have the products from Silicon Valley or from, from maybe from China in the future as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't want them only. So, so we have to have alternative approaches here, decentralization. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to Peter. When we talk about crypto, again, there's an esotericism to it. But this stuff is being practically um, implemented, experimented with to change the world as we know it. I mean, it truly is an impactful technology, and I'm sure you can absolutely. attest to that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Peter, it's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me.